my shield, and he in whom I trust. Thanks for joining me again. And today we are going to finally be able to look at the Schmidt and Bender PM2 5x25x56. They are built to order. So I finally got it in. Three and a half months of waiting and I'm excited to take a look. So let's open her up. First impression is the box. I'm not too impressed. You know, the Vortex Razor, I was very impressed with the packaging. For a $4,000 scope, you think that it would be in a better packaging than this. But it's just a box. I guess, you know, it is a Schmidt and Bender. So I guess they don't need a nice box. But, um, you know, I actually got this one on sale. It was on sale, plus it had a... Um, 15% off Optics, uh, Optics Planet. So let's go ahead and see what's, in, what's inside. So I think in total I got this for about almost 1300, or not 1300, uh, 3200, which is a very good price for this. So let's see what we have in store. We got manual. We have our serial number and all our stuff on the, the back. Pretty thick manual here for this scope here. Warranty cards, all in German. And then we have our serial number sticker. Let's put this aside. Here's our scope. Bubble wrap, there we are. Just to do a quick pan here. And as you can see, this is the RAL 8000. Now I think in a lot of the web pictures, the RAL and the Pantone are actually confused. I've seen so many pictures swapped. So this is basically just an earthy color. There's no really metallic to this like the Pantone does. I think they're both great colors. This one went best with my chassis, with my uh, MPA chassis, which I, which I picked this color. I believe this one comes in RAL 8000. Um, I think Pantone and black. So it's a very nice color, very earthy. This is a very flat, matte, earthy color, as you can see. It's hard to differentiate from the web, but hopefully this gives you a good depiction on what the actual color looks like. All right, guys, uh, let's get a closer look at this. And the first thing I notice when I lift this up, the weight, it's very light. So officially this is 39 ounces, 39.8 ounces. So if you compare this with its competitors, this is probably the strong point of this scope is the weight. So if you want a weight saving scope, this would be an ideal scope. So the most important thing to me as a turrets, we'll get that in a, to that in a second. Uh, first thing, I notice is the diopter. Let's go here. Diopter right here. So you could actually, it starts out there and then you can adjust it and it extends out about a little over a half an inch. So that's a, it's a very smooth feature there. And I guess that, that would help us uh, greatly, you know, especially with the uh, eye relief. So I didn't even notice that at first, but uh, that's a pretty unique feature that you don't see in a lot of scopes. So, and you have your rubber um, piece to, for your magnification. It's not aluminum, it's actually rubber. So it's, you can grip it very well. And it's not super easy to turn, but you don't want these turning on their own. So nothing uh, really uh, different or special about this. Um, one thing you'll notice if I turn this around, you have your, uh, why does that go out of focus? There we go. This is your illumination. Once you start to turn this, it turns on. And this is adjustable between zero and 11. So I notice as soon as you turn it, it turns on. There's no on off switch. So it must have a auto on, auto off. So 
Do I think this is a negative thing? I think with putting this up here, it could have been a little weight savings, but I kind of like it. It's, uh, it makes it easier to use. You know, it's right there, turn it on, just turn it on what illumination you want. I kind of like that. Instead of having to pull something out of the uh, main turret like you would on the Vortex. But either one, I don't think it's a really gonna, it doesn't, it's not a positive or a negative to me. Anyway, so let's turn this back around. Get this into the center of view. One thing I noticed about these turrets, when you first turn them, you know, they are distinguishable clicks. They're a little mushy. I mean, not, not, not too bad. Now, if I take my night force and I compare, these are a little mushy. I like the grips on the night force a little better, but in comparison, the, the clicks on these are just about the same. I don't see much different. There's nothing special about the clicks on these. Now I know with the Vortex, definitely you can feel a difference. These are just about the same size as the Night Force. One distinguishing feature is these lock, the, the locks. So once you set your elevation, it's locked. You know, this is a very battle hardy scope. So if it gets roughed up, bumped, you know, that'll keep its position. Okay. Um, as in regards to our uh, elevation, we are at negative two. You see this little uh, circle up here. You'll see what happens. You have two sets of numbers, zero and then 14. Zero to 14 on 13 at the bottom. 14 to 26 at the top. So if I turn this, once I get to 14, you'll see this pop up. So it's a little indicator to show that we are at our higher elevation here. So, and we can go all the way to 26. Then we go back down, you'll see the inner indicator. See it? Watch what happens. Nice and flat again. We'll go back to zero. It's a pretty cool feature. And same thing with our windage. We have a locking mechanism. And it actually has a big, big lettering there locked. Other than that, you know, you got your, your knob for your uh, parallax is a significantly bigger. So we got from 10 all the way to 1,000, or basically an infinity. So no clicks on this, it's just uh, nice and smooth. Not easy turning, so if you set it, it's, it'll stay in place. So just looking at this out of the box, there's really nothing more I can say about this. It's made in Germany. The Isadela is Gleikum Dieka. The ice cream parlor is around the corner. <laughs> Nothing more I can say about this. Next video, I will be taking the ATAC. I will be taking a Vortex Razor in the other room, and we'll be comparing everything, and we'll be categorizing the features on all these just to compare them. Now I'm not going into major detail and nitpick the numbers and the stats. I'm just going to look at the obvious differences in the field between the three. Low light situation, normal light, check out the turrets, the glass clarity, and so on. Now remember, this is nearly retail 4,000. So I really want to see some major differences in order for me to really appreciate the Schmidt and Bender. So we'll see how it performs. Join me on that next video. I think that I've been waiting a long time to do that video. We're gonna do it right. We're gonna go through an Excel spreadsheet just so we can number everything and just keep, uh, keep a, uh, an accurate 
chart on or a rating. We'll make our own rating on the differences between the scopes. So join me for that one. We'll see you next time.